this video we're demonstrating the repair of a chronic partial thickness hamstring tear utilizing two portals which we have created in the subgluteal crease we carefully and bluntly dissect to create our potential space you can see that we previously visualized the posterior femoral nerve during the course of the blunt dissection we'll carefully dissect out the sciatic nerve as well and then once we've identified our nerve vascular structures we proceed on with blunt dissection of the ischial tuberosity Typically, I'll use a three-portal technique, two in the crease, and then one superior directly above the level of the tuberosity, which I've localized with the aid of a spinal needle and fluoroscopy. If we need to use electrocardiography for hemostasis, we do so judiciously. We will utilize a shaver to clear some of the soft tissue as well, but typically you're able to do a great deal of dissection simply utilizing the blunt obturator. Preoperatively, we look very carefully at where we felt the tear would identify itself once we entered the gluteal space. The tear, typically, if it's more medial, will involve more of the semimembranosis and semitendinosis involving the more medial aspect of the issue of tuberosity. If the tear is more of the biceps femoris, will involve the more lateral aspect. In this case, her tear site ran from the junction of the semimembranosis and biceps femoris, so this allowed us to target where we're going to plunge our obturator in order to find our plane. Once we bluntly plunge our obturator, we follow it down with the scope and we can clearly see mixoid degeneration of the hamstring tendon detachment, partial thickness of the hamstring tendon, primarily the mid-substance and in some cases the more inferior aspect. And we can see attempts at reparative healing in this case, we simply utilize our shaver and start debriding the mixoid degenerated areas as well as taking the issue tuberosity down to a good bleeding bony bed to allow us to place our suture anchor. I will fashion our third portal directly above the issue tuberosity and this allows us to bring our blunt obturator back into the field and allow us to utilize this as a retractor. This will give us optimum visualization by holding the window open and allow us to visualize in this case, attempted reparative process, we can see that the hamstring chronically has been torn. We see this very similar appearance with chronic luteal tendon tears, where over time they develop an enthesophyte prior to tear, and then they go on to tear, develop mixo degeneration, chronic detachment of the tendon. And we simply utilize our shaver in this case, but we can utilize the high-speed bird to ride this back to a good bleeding bony bed. Again, we're cognizant of our neurovascular structures. We want to take great care to ensure appropriate pump pressure. We keep our pump between 35 and 45 millimeters of mercury. I do utilize epinephrine, one ampule for every three liters to assist with hemostasis. And we simply carefully and expeditiously dissect out the torn portion of the hamstring tendon to allow us to reattach it. I do not routinely take down the hamstring for repair. simply prefer to debride the torn area and reattach. In my experience, this has been sufficient in order to achieve healing of the hamstring tendon back to the bone. And once we've got the hamstring insertional site debrided adequately, We'll go ahead and bring in a cannula. And what I've also found is that this is very, very dense bone. It's very difficult to try and tap. If you tap alone, it might result in anchor breakage. And so what I prefer to do is, with the cannula in place, drill a pilot hole. I've already drilled the pilot hole in this case. Prior to tapping, here I'm utilizing the Arthrex Bioabsorbable 4.5 anchors. The tap has a very short distance for which you have to tap. That way you reduce our risk of drilling out through the ischial tuberosity into the foramen since we're trying to obtain the optimum angle at the inferior aspect. Once we've tapped, we bring our anchor in and simply seat it to depth. And you can see that I've got the retractor in through the superior portal which later I'm going to utilize for suture shuttling. So we see our anchor appropriately to depth. 
In this case, I really like our position. This is a rather small patient uh, on larger tears, multiple tendon tears. You can utilize double row repair techniques. You can utilize multiple anchor techniques with more room. So once we insert our anchor, we just utilize standard suture shuttling techniques. I prefer to pass the suture with either a labral scorpion or standard rotator cuff scorpion. The labral scorpion will sometimes give you a little bit more vertical throw in order to achieve better penetration through the tenon, whereas the standard rotator cuff scorpion might let you get a little bit further up underneath a tear and allow you to grasp more tenon to incorporate into your repair. So here you can see we're reaching in from superiorly, retrieving our sutures, back out through our superior portal, where our, whereas our cannula is in through our gluteal crease portal, and our visualization camera is in through our gluteal crease portal as well. I utilize the uh, C-scope, which allows me to not have to worry about getting too much water on the lens or too much fogging in the field and disturbing my visualization. Again, after I've passed sutures with standard passers, I go ahead and retrieve and tie with sliding locking knots and back them up with alternating half hitches. I do pass all sutures through the cannula to protect the neurovascular structures that are in the field because they're very in, in very close proximity. And especially when passing down lower on the biceps femoris to take great care to ensure that I've got clear visualization of the sciatic nerve prior to tying my knots but also prior to passage of the suture through the tendon. So here quite simply we've passed our sutures. We're going to retrieve them back into this more rigid cannula. Entire sliding locking knots. You can, at this point, if you wish to inject any PRP, ACP, into the repair site, you can do so with the cannula in place. It's much easier with the cannula in place with the longer spinal needle and trying to find this at the end of the case as you might lose some of your potential space. And here you've got optimum visualization. But we go ahead and tie this and pass several alternating half hitches to ensure we've got adequate compression of the tendon into the bed that we've created for repair. Again, I utilize the end cutter. I want the minimum amount of suture tail that I can get for each cut. Arthrex makes a nice device for this, which will cut the sutures very, very close to the knot. And once I've tied my initial set of sutures, I'll go ahead and retrieve the secondary set of sutures, which have been shuttled initially out through the most superior portal. And bring those back into the cannula and tie those as well. This will give me a nice secure repair to my ischial tuberosity. Here we retrieve those secondary sutures and we're going to go ahead and tie these down. And then rehab postoperatively, I put them in a knee brace, hinge knee brace flexed at 30 degrees of flexion. I keep them locked at this for six weeks except for passive range of motion. Currently, I did not start any strengthening until after week number six to try and protect the repair and I've had uh, great success thus far. See, we have a nice stable repair.